Thomas M. Dyke has retired. And I'd like to welcome you as we show you another true account of the silent service. This is the story of what happened to the USS Salmon off the coast of Japan. And it begins on the morning of October 30th, 1944. Well, as far as I'm concerned, I put in for submarine duty because I'd like to see a little action for a change. That tanker I was on didn't do anything but shuttle back and forth between L.A. and Pearl. Well, I've seen plenty of action so far, but what sold me on subs is when I heard about the kind of chow they put out. Man, I sure want to go for some of them thick steaks and all. We didn't get none of that aboard the tin can I served on. Hey, you from the South? How'd you guess? Oh, just instinct. Man, was our captain sorry when my transfer come through. Tennessee, he said to me, Tennessee, boy, we sure are gonna miss you on that 40 millimeter gun. Why, we ain't never had a gunner aboard that can knock down them red meatball planes the way you do. You were a gunner, huh? Are you kidding, man? Why, I done splashed six enemy planes so far in this little old war. All right, stow the gas. Williams? That's me. Kenyon? Yes, sir. Jordan? I'm Jordan. My name's Olmsted, chief of the boat aboard the Salmon. Pick up your bags and let's get going. So began Salmon's patrol. Thirty days later, at dawn of October 30th, 1944, the Salmon was beginning the final day of a successful patrol. She was approximately a hundred miles off the coast of Japan. Rain squalls and more rain squalls. That's no novelty. Morning, Captain. Mr. Lanning. Morning, Olmstead. Olmstead. Tonight we head back to Saipan. Gonna luck us up another target for our last four torpedoes? Guaranteed, Captain. Gave my rabbit's foot three extra rubs this morning. <laughs> well, it's been a pretty good patrol so far. Yeah, those new men seem to have shaped up pretty well, Olmstead. They've been okay up to now, sir. You're a perfectionist. Maybe so, Mr. Lanning. The rest of our boys have been together for quite a while now. These new boys, well, not until I've had a chance to watch them when the chips are down. Especially Tennessee. Tennessee? Oh, you mean young Jordan, huh? Yes, sir. Well, why Jordan more than the other two new men? He looks all right to me. Well, maybe it's just because the kid never shuts up, sir. Listen. She'll be a coming around hey, the mountain. Tennessee, knock it off, will you? A guy can't hear himself think. Why, my ma used to sing us kids to sleep with that song. Well, I'll sing you to sleep. With this, if you don't pipe down. <laughs> Man, I sure would like a chance to get a few shots with this little old squirrel rifle. Now, what did you ever shoot except your big mouth? Why, Larson? Don't you know we've got the champion gun pointer of the whole Navy aboard? <laughs> you fellas kidding me? Why, back home, my pa taught us kids how to shoot before we was as tall as a rifle barrel. She'll be coming around the mountain. Message from the Silver Sides, Captain. Large Japanese freighter with escort. Position 110 miles due south of Bungo Suido. On course 340. Approximate speed, 15 knots. Notify Silver Sides. We'll make an end run on the surface to get in position ahead of target. All engines ahead full. Course 325. This rain squall is going to make it tough to find her. Radio Silver Sides. We lost the target on another rain squall. Captain, Silver Sides said she just got a torpedo hit on the target. The freighter's dead in the water. Her two escorts are patrolling east and west of her. Good. Huh? Got her again? Propellers. There's another one. 
Sounds like two ships with twin screws, both at high speed. Well, that must be the escorts. I've spotted one of them. Range about 8,000 yards. We'll go in on the surface as near as we can. Less than 6,000 yards. Those escorts are getting louder and louder, Captain. Yeah, they're both heading our way. Take her down! Degrees down, Bobble, sir. She'll be a driving two white horses when she comes. She'll be Five down, tell your job. This is the captain. We got two hits on that freighter. She's sinking. I knowed we were gonna hit that old thing. Captain, they're both honest. They got us cool. Left full rudder, all ahead standard. Left full rudder, all ahead standard. Let's see if a 180 degree turn will shake them off. They're coming fast, shifting to short scale. All hands stand alert at your stations. Those escorts are coming in. Get me an experienced man on the stern planes. Get on the stern planes, Sam. Well, what's the matter, Chief? You afraid I'm going to turn chicken? Of course not. It's just that we want an experienced man there. Taking on water fast. There's no power on the pumps. Maneuvering room. Maneuvering room. Speakers and phones are dead, Captain. Pass the word to the maneuvering room to give us all the speed they can make. Just check forward engine rooms, Captain. They're taking in plenty of water there. Give them 15 degrees up angle. 15 degrees up angle. They've turned. They're starting another run. 320 feet. 310. She's coming up. Steady down! Steady down! How deep are we supposed to be able to take this thing, Chief? We're below the depth she was built and tested to take already. We will have chicken and dumplings when she comes. We will. Hey, Chief. What's the matter? I just thought I ought to tell you. I think this would be a fine time for you to give that rabbit's foot of yours a couple of extra special rubs. Harvey, see what you can do about getting that bilge pump going again. Aye, aye, sir. Captain, it's taken full rise angle on the planes just to keep her from sinking any further. Only one thing to do. Surface and take our chances with those escort vessels. That's how I figure too, Captain. We're taking in too much water. How's that bilge pump? It's dead, sir. I'm trying to rig up some auxiliary leads. What's 
holding us together. She ought to be crushed like an eggshell by now. Don't ask me, Dick. Only chance of making emergency repairs is the surface. Have a gun crew stand by. I think we're going to need them. Yes, sir. Well, you've only got 30 rounds of ammunition left. Yes, I know. over 7,000 yards away from us. What the devil are they doing over there? I don't know. But I sure hope they stay there for a while. Here's a quick report, Captain. We've got three vent risers split from the concussion of those ash cans. The main induction's flat on a pancake. Gyro compass is out. We've lost our steering and there's no compressed air for starting the engines. Is that all? That's just the high spot, sir. I haven't even checked on minor damage. But Army's got the pump going and the engine room gang's trying to turn the engines over. Close all emergency vents! Well, we can't dive again if we want to. From now on, we're a surface ship whether we like it or not. I almost forgot. We've got a ruptured fuel tank valve and we've lost about a thousand gallons of diesel oil. What are they depth charging? The silver sides over there? Ah, uh, you just gave us the answer. A thousand gallons of fuel makes a nice big oil slick. That bright Japanese commander of those escorts thinks we're under it. Well, what do you know? Homestead's rabbit's foot must be working overtime. More than that. I've been thinking the last half hour that the salmon has an extra man in its crew. Maybe you're right. I just pray that extra passenger will stay with us. I'll feel better when they get that emergency antenna rig so we can talk to Silversides. I'm going down to talk to the gun crew for a minute. Take charge here. Uh, yes, sir. Send an alarm! Men! Men! Those escorts come after us. I don't want you to fire except when I give the word. We're too short of ammunition to waste any. Aye, aye, sir. What happened to our telescopic sights? Those old depth charges busted them worse than my paw. It'd bust an empty jug, Captain. I'll have to use the open sights, then. Yes, sir. I'm keeping Larson to the control room to relay orders. Our phones and speakers are out. We could hear him bellering from here, Captain. Remember, you've only got 30 rounds. Make each one count. Aye, aye, sir. Aye, sir. Send an alert! How's it going? Our boys had to rig chain flows to try to open the outboard exhaust valve, Mr. Lang. Our hulls did it so bad they wouldn't go out on power. Are we going to be able to turn over the engines? As soon as we get more water pumped out of us, sir. We tried to start one of them, but there was water in the cylinder head. She's out of commission. All right, boys, let's go. That's it. How soon will you be set? Not a couple of minutes, sir. Palmer! Tell radio to make contact with Silver Sides as soon as I give you the word. Stand by in the radio room. Are you okay, Arby? All okay, sir. Did you get any bad shocks? The battery's so dead it didn't even bite very hard. Here's some coffee, Captain. It's only lukewarm, but they didn't have enough current to heat it up. Message from Silver Sides, Captain. They received our message. They're going to make a run on the surface to try and throw off those escorts. Silverside succeeded in luring away all but one of the Japanese escort vessels, while the salmon silently awaited its fate. Well, we can thank Silversides that we only have one left to worry about. Engine room reports they're ready to go ahead on one engine, Captain. Tell him good work and ahead one third. Captain says good work and ahead one third. What is 
that sound good? Just in time. That escort spotted us, Dick. Captain, we've got the gyro compass running again. Get below. We're going to be on the fire soon. Why do I have to go? Because if I get it, we have to have somebody aboard it to take the ship out of this mess. That's an order, Dick. All right, sir. Run crew, stand by! That escort's coming! We break for manual steering, Captain. This is kind of like a hurrah's mess, but I think it'll hold together for a while. Won't be long now. Loudon, stand by! He's cheering off, Captain. What's that guy up to? Now he's headed for us again. What's with that guy, anyway? Range 3,000 yards. Fire one round. Now he's turning again. Missed. Over. Now he's coming for us again. I got it. His only good size gun is aft. That's why he's got to turn his stern toward us every time he fires. That's it. He's going to tip us off that way every time he fires. We'll drive him crazy. We'll know just when to dodge. Let me know the instant he turns. When I give you the word, every man on the double take shelter on the far side of the conning tower. Beginning his turn. Take cover! shooting. What's the matter with those guys, Captain? That's no, not their fault. Our telescopic sights were smashed. Even with open sights, they ought to be able to... Beginning his turn again. Take cover! Look! Full runner! Full runner! Say, Captain. Look at what that old Japanese shrapnel done to this shell I was holding. I'm gonna keep it for a souvenir. Well, at least the Japanese stopped him from singing. Oh, she'll be a wearing diamond bracelets when she comes. She'll be a wearing diamond bracelets when she comes. Oh, when she comes. <laughs> I just got me all the protection I can carry, Captain, sir. How many rounds left? Fourteen, counting these, sir. Say, uh, Captain, that there uh, camouflage paint on the open sights don't show up worth a nickel in this moonlight. Captain, sir, I, I sure wish you'd give me a chance as pointer. My pa taught me how to shoot on an old squirrel rifle that never had no sights. All right. Go ahead. Turning again. Take cover! Right, Thundercrease Runner! Right, 10 degrees, runner! Captain says for you to move over, boy. Let a man shoot this old rifle that knows how. Gonna have to lead him a little. Like he was a ducker coming in. To the right a little. Little more. Fire! Uh, old Japanese zigged instead of zagging. Well, next time we'll outguess him. To the right a little more. More still. A hit. 
Right on his bridge. Scratch <laughs> one Japanese squirrel! Fire! Got him again! Cease fire! <laughs> Uh, Pass the word to the maneuvering room to give us everything they've got. Maneuvering room, give us everything you've got. Dick, come up here. Course 150. We're heading for that rain squall up ahead. Here's our chance to get away. What stopped him? Two hits, one on his bridge and one aft. I think the last one got a steering. You know, Captain, I got a hunch that boy Tennessee is going to work out okay. You think so? Because I'm going to recommend him for a decoration. Communications just decoded this, sir. What are you whispering for? No voice left, Captain. That's <laughs> <laughs> an answer from Admiral Hoover on Saipan. He's sending us naval air cover. Well, maybe we'll make it yet. No match for aircraft in a fight and unable to dive, the salmon welcomed our covering planes. And none too soon. The enemy was not going to let her go without a fight. Dick, we've made it. Captain, Chief Olmstead says I gotta ask your permission before I can send this here souvenir back home to my folks. It being government property. Tennessee, if my permission is what it takes, you've got it. Thank you, sir. <laughs> She'll be coming round the mountain. When she comes, she'll be coming around the mountain. When she comes, she'll be, she'll be coming around the mountain. <laughs> I'll be back in a moment with our special guest. Now, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Captain Harley K. Norman, who is commanding officer of the USS Salmon on the patrol you have just witnessed. Well, Kenny, we just saw you and your boys go through a rough time. It was rough, all right. I must admit, I found it a lot more comfortable to watch than to go through. You and all your men aboard the Salmon must have taken as much punishment as any submarine that ever survived. The Salmon certainly proved she could take it. But it was my officers and my crew that really brought her through. I know it was. And you and your men not only lived up to the finest traditions of the Navy, but you added a few of your own. It's been a pleasure and an honor to have had you with us. Thank you, Tommy. We hope you'll be aboard again when we bring you another true story of the silent service. Take her down and not the the deep blue underneath the ocean will control the ocean wide from down down underneath the sea take the coast the past the world in the future's yet to be that to say as long as there's a submarine underneath the sea so wait for dive and take the time. Go down, down, underneath the ocean. Fear as man will find me now. In the deep blue, underneath the 
the sea.